I don't have to have this white judgmental eye checking me, editing me, approving of me. With celebrated novels like The Bluest Eye, Sula and Song of Solomon, Morrison showed the world that the literary canon is not the property of white male writers. Her books on black identity in America brought her both critical and commercial fame. Morrison became the first African-American woman to win the Nobel Prize in Literature, and her novel Beloved won the Pulitzer Prize in 1988. The literary giant will be remembered for her giving voice to the silence, breaking racial barriers and constantly working towards shattering white supremacy in all aspects of society. Now, to tell us more about the indelible mark Toni Morrison left on the world, Stephanie Lee joins me. She's an academic at Indiana University and the author of Toni Morrison, a biography. So, uh, speaking of the biography, as her biographer, was there any significant moment or memory that um, has stayed with you over the years? I think one of the most interesting moments is the story that she tells about why she started writing. Um, for a fiction writer, she actually began writing quite late. It wasn't until she was in her late 30s that she published her first book, The Bluest Eye. And she did so, she started writing when she was living alone in Syracuse, away from all of her family. Um, and she started writing primarily as a way to create her own community. Um, it was a, a way for her not to feel so lonely in a place in which she was incredibly isolated. And she said repeatedly that she wanted to write the kind of book that she wanted to read. Um, and I think that's how she, we should be thinking about Morrison's work, is that she was writing for herself and for an entire community that she felt that she cherished and belonged to. How much of her personality contributed uh, to her iconic status, you think, as a writer? Well, I think what's most charismatic and interesting about her is what she does on the page, rather than the kind of um, personal or physical presence that she had in terms of the media or the academic environment. Um, her work is just astounding in terms of how it creates a sense of intimacy between the reader um, and the writer. She's always almost welcoming you into a kind of confidence about the community she's writing about. The first line of The Bluest Eye, which is her first book, is quiet as it's kept, there are no marigolds the year, the summer of 1948. And so it's almost like she's letting you in on a secret onto um, the, the most intimate and private moments of a community. I would love to call her a feminist writer because that's what she is to me, but we know that she sort of distanced herself from the title and she rejected being called a feminist. Why did she think that you th did that, you think? I think labels are far less important to Morrison than the work of being a feminist, the lived experience of being a single mother, um, of caring for other women, um, of thinking about figures of religious power, not just in terms of a masculinist, masculinist or patriarchal model. And so for her, feminism was not about the kind of name that you identify with, but the life that you live, the, the way that you write, the way that you operate in the world and take care of other people. Um, for the most part, she shunned limited, limiting labels and instead was more concerned about what she did in the everyday. Uh, speaking of everyday, language was definitely one of her major concerns. Um, she thought that language was, is where injustice sort of started and got rooted. Mm -hmm. Can you please explain to us how so? Well, I mean, if we think about the associations of words like black and white in the, in, in the English language, blackness tends to be um, associated with evil, with danger, with a lot of negative things. And so we carry those associations into how we understand whole populations of people. And she was constantly asking us to reevaluate and question the kind of assumptions that underlay um, just even basic words like black and white. And um, as for a last question before we wrap up, speaking of her legacy, what kind of a contribution do you think she made to African American and American literature? What legacy did she leave behind? There are so many legacies she's leaving behind. Um, I think one of the most important aspects of her as well is that she was fundamentally writing for an African-American audience. And that's something that generations of African-American intellectuals and writers had desired to do. But I think Morrison was the first to um, leave behind the desire to explain African-American life to a white audience. And instead, she asks white audiences to come to her to understand the language, the nuances, the cultural codes uh, of black life without explaining them first. And so she was fundamentally writing for an insider African-American community. 
Awesome. Stephanie Lee, thank you so much for joining us today and bringing your Thanks expertise. Thanks for having me. Thank you.